Welcome to SV Seeker in Oklahoma, where the wind comes whipping down the plain. Yeah, right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma, this ship is built from scratch. Bravo to everybody out there that fabricates something. This channel is for you. We are encouraging builders around the world. Find your passion and build something. If you don't have your passion, then build something anyway. The skills will lead you to your passion. So, thanks for joining us on this video. If you've uh, already got a passion, turn off the video, turn off the computer, get out there and do that. And if you're still with us, then uh, join Mark and I. We're going to be fitting in the cabinets in the pilot house. Mark uh, is good at this because he built out that uh, travel van over there. He kind of moves around the United States helping people. What a wonderful way to put, spend uh, your retirement is to just decide I'm going to pack it up and go out and help people with their projects, whatever that might be. And I'm fortunate enough to, he's here for the second time. And this is Mark. He's, uh, we're working on putting in the, the uh, well, what's it called? It's a porthole, but it's in the floor. So it's a floor hole. Oh. <laughs> Back with another load of stainless steel from our friends at the Rule Company. And why are they my friends? Because they gave me this awesome thermometer back here and it says it's 76 degrees I think that's almost right okay they didn't give it to me I I harassed them until they gave it to me is that the same thing no it's that's it's, it's, it's less than stealing that's right yeah yeah that would be harassing. <laughs> okay if, if that's not a reason for cutting it with the pointy side up I don't know what is that's a horrible noise when I was building my submarine back in a nicer neighborhood, I had a neighbor come to me one night after I was cutting aluminum with a skill saw. That's the most horrible noise I've ever heard! Alright, the horrible noise approach opposed to this. Yeah. The other advantage of this is that it's always cutting down to the same thickness of material. And you can adjust the saw to cut heavier or lighter by turning this. It relaxes that spring and doesn't give it so much counterbalance so the weight up here pushes down harder. The other thing you ought to know is don't try and trim your fingernail with the saw, okay? It's not a good thing. So we're installing our portal between the pilot house and the engine room down below. And it's nicely situated right up at the front, right beside the wheel, so you can look down into the engine room, see if there's fire, flood. More importantly, you can talk to people down there and hand tools and such back and forth. Mark has already put some of this butyl tape between the two surfaces. That'll seal it up. It doesn't really need to be that great of a sealant here because this deck will get wet. We expect water to flood across this in bad conditions, but uh, not so bad that it would... I mean, this is just to stop a lot of water from going down. Most of the time, I imagine, this will be open. We'll also get ventilation from down there uh, up into here so we can take some of that heat from the engines if we happen to be running the engines and let it come into the pilot house if it's cold outside. 7 16 inch bolts because they come up through that painted piece really easy without tearing the paint off. A washer down below to protect the paint on the bottom side. A washer up top just because it looks so cool and the piece that is resistance is the acorn nut. Yeah, those are awesome looking. You can see how lovely this Buna is because it just squishes out from underneath but it's not gooey so you just let it dry up and you'll be able to tear it off. I don't think we'll have any reason to ever use the dogs, but uh, they're going along with us because I can use them as spare parts down below on the real ones. Those acorn nuts had never seized before they went in there. And Mark here has figured out a way of latching back the viewport. And we have fastened our cabinet carcasses back to each other, just some screws. Now we've got to figure out a way of fastening them into the pilot house wall. And I'm thinking we'll go ahead and fasten them to the floor as well. The trick here is all this pilot house has to come off before we move to the Tulsa Port of Catoosa. August 12th for that. And then August 21st for the launch. So plan that on your calendar. But this seam right here is the joint. This is the aluminum that goes with the pilot house. And this is steel below it that is part of the actual structure. We'll bolt the two together through all these holes. And right now the thinking is it will isolate the bolts so that we're not physically electrically connecting the aluminum to the steel my other thought is hell just do it and you'll have a little bit more galvanic corrosion but it'll be almost an impossible thing to avoid anyway so i'm i'm still not sure about that the jewelry is still out you can throw your uh, your two bits in onto the uh, the comments below but i'm kind of thinking we'll try this and see well we we pull the we just unbolt it from the floor it bracket stays on the cabinet uh -huh. And then we can move the whole unit as, as a whole away from the walls. 
and that'll let us get back into there but not have to disassemble our cabinets with the countertops and everything so that can already be on there and then we can reach back inside here and do the same thing we can we can weld that steel the pipe and put a bracket out and put a screw in or a bolt through the the back of the carcass there yeah all right let's try that okay my apologies to vmac I, I love the air compressor welder and all that but uh the exhaust cover is going to make some brackets for me Because that's where you yeah, set it down. Let's say that's a good place. Okay, then that's a good place. Okay. Where's that tiny little hole you drilled? You know, I think I'm just going to tap it with a drill. It drives people nuts that I don't use a tap handle, but eh. Most of them are crazy anyway. Yes, the music is going next door. Do you feel my impact? So a little scratch and let it start. And then just a little bit of a weld is all you want. Yeah. Pull off. I clip. Yeah, and then let it cool. I, I didn't even get any in there. <laughs> it's like a blob. Wait a minute. Well, a, a blob is okay to start with. It didn't even. Yeah, it but you didn't even connect. No, that's all right. Not yet. Not yet. You need to take the slag off that's on the weld that's there. Right. That's good. Now, again, just a little scratch to start the arc, and mainly put the heat into the pipe. Yeah, not bad. Do it again. It'll work. And I turned the art, I turned the heat down so it didn't burn that stainless so badly. And that makes it harder to light. Let me try. I think this is what happens to a lot of people at home when they try and weld. They don't have information like make it hotter, the, start, the sticks are easier to strike. Mm -hmm. Start off welding big heavy steel, not little skinny stuff. And your success rate skyrockets. And then once you've had a success, you kind of learn how to adjust to the, the weirdness of things. Very cruel of me to say do this and then walk off to get myself a glass of tea. <laughs> yeah, it's doable. Now, what I did differently is I, I struck and I pulled the arc way out of way. So I struck it. I, I barely touched it, but I'm parallel to it. I'm pulling this way. Uh -huh. And I, you can let that arc leap like about yay far in the half inch. So you don't have to keep the sticks close when you're lighting it. Oh, I'm trying to... You're trying to keep it yeah. right in there, right in, right when you light it, and it shorts out and just becomes a conductor, and that mm -hmm. what makes it so insanely hot. I think it could be done. If you had the I'll patient. try again. Yeah, good. Give me that hammer and I'll knock off what I... Actually, that's enough right there, but we'll hurt to make it stronger. That's, that's the other thing people get wrong about stick welding. They think, oh, it doesn't look good. Hit it with a hammer and see if you can tear it apart. Most likely you're going to break the steel before you break the weld on, on this type of welding. You don't need much of it to make it a good connection. Now scratch kind of parallel to it. Yeah, that'll do it. It'll do it in a little while. At least it should. Here are the other thing, dude. It's got flux on the end of it. And you do that and it breaks the flux off. Pound it into rock or sand or something like that and it works. There you go. Yeah, beautiful. Stop before you get too hot. 
Yeah. Hey. Okay. Even lit a fire. Good on you. I didn't think the oh, I got a little bit on the yeah. bracket. No, yeah, yeah, I can see it from here. Yeah, you got a little bit on there and that's all you need. Yeah, let all that cool down, put one more on the side of it and it'll be fine. Look at that, not a drop spilled. Works like a charm. Well, the brackets are all welded in now, just a little paint to keep all the rust away. Do you have the wood? Yeah, I do. Oh, God. Yeah, there's 30. That's fantastic. It's, oh, part of yeah. it's holding the boat together. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Oh, did Bart kick off by himself? Yeah. <laughs> well, let's just try it and see. Ready? Yep. Well then. No, I no, think it's, it's just wobbly. It's just wobbly. Let's just put another one on this side. Give it a spin. Damn. That's pretty straight. Uh, that's good enough for me. There it is. Okay. cardboard template it, it kind of helps to staple it down to get it right and once it's all in we'll figure out how to get four by eight sheet so plywood to do this you don't got to be real exacting about cutting the cardboard panel because you can just hot glue them together in the shape that you need so if you don't like the edge along something just take a strip of cardboard and glue it in there and you're done now I think I spent a dollar fifty a sheet on these but I had to buy you know a bunch of them but it's great for building a boat I'm almost out and I'm almost done building the boat now this is actually not a marine gearbox. This is a post hole auger for a tractor. So this thing cost about $165 and the marine version of it cost $2,000. So <laughs> yeah, that's why it's here. You got it? little feet on it too. Here we poke down through the cardboard, found the board underneath it. Now we just cut right along the top of the cabinet. Well, we got it all done. The tops are, they're not in yet. They're got to be screwed down, but that's what they're going to look like. And then I think we're just going to put Mike over the top of them. Well, it's crew change day. Mark Sims is on his way to Alabama and Brian Holmes is on his way up from Dallas. So we'll continue to work on the cabinets when Brian gets here. And uh, you know, these guys travel around doing good things for other people on their time. And I tell you what, it's just something that um, that makes me humble that they, you know, pick a place like this to come to. But I think they've got something figured out that's working well for them in their lives. Brian's idea is to, he's going to eventually be on a catamaran and he'll be helping other people fix their boats. It's just what he loves doing. He's great at building cabinets. Mark Sims is already doing that, traveling around in his van and working with people. You know, sometimes he gets paid for the project, sometimes he donates his time. It's just... Uh, you know they both have purpose in their life and it has to do with making something so it's something i sell so if you're uh, looking for an idea uh, maybe this is the fix to the world you know involve yourself in somebody else's life and their project get your own project and build it and invite people in i mean it's worked fantastic for me y you look at the news and they're just horrible things the news about people shooting their whole family it's happened twice here and the media just keeps on echoing it and it happens again and it's like that's that's not what humans are good for we're good for working together 
as a team. You just gotta get out there and start. So get out there and start. A little soggy this morning. Brian Holmes is back with us. He's up there working on the cabinets. Welcome to spring in Oklahoma. Okay, so Brian's up here. He's using foam to create templates for the plywood. Foam's I got left over from other projects, but that's easy to cut and fit in here and get the idea. It's a really nice way of getting a feel for how big something's going to be. Like we made this bigger because it's to be easier to sleep on. So we lose the ice maker and the little fridge, but that's okay. There's a deep freezer sits there. And this is the dining room area. So he's again working in the templates first. $50 a sheet plywood. Now I never thought I'd see the day. Yeah, 60, almost 60. Almost 60, huh? Now you might think the uh, foam board is expensive at $20 a sheet to be using as templates, but it's leftover scrap. But compared to the $60 a sheet plywood, yeah, it seems reasonable now. You don't want to have to do that twice. Yeah. Oh. It is what it is. Much respect for Richard Day at 42 Fab who is tearing these batteries apart you guys are seeing in. These are 18650s and they are not always easy to get out of the packing. But he's building us some battery banks for the boat and many thanks to him for doing that. And many thanks to you for sending these old battery packs in. And we have received a huge donation of these things now but they're actually not 18650s. So what we're going to do is uh, Richard's going to build us up some suitcase that'll uh, you know, something that we can carry onto shore or onto another boat that'll be like a, a generator that's quiet. Richard is also a board member for the Sea Chest Foundation. That's our nonprofit that'll raise money for the boat once she's out on the water so we can pay for researchers' fuel and equipment, things that they need to get the work done. <sighs> I'm getting there. I'm getting better at this. A lot of food stores would go inside of there. Lost the refrigerator and the ice maker, but they go down below. There would be crew quarters. It's just for snackies and drinks and such. Deep freezer goes there, drawers, washing machine. I need to be able to sit and steer at the same time. Anyway, get out there and make something. Find your happy. What'd you make today?